All right, so we're looking at 2-2. Two, two. We are going to break it up into two parts. This may seem like an English section, but it is not. There is writing of sentences, but the whole purpose is to think logically and think about are these if-then sentences true or not, okay? So first of all, conditional statements is one-third of the test, okay? So what a conditional statement is, it's an if-then statement. So I'm going to give you a sentence that is not an if-then sentence and have you write it as an if-then sentence, then we're going to do some things to that sentence. But before we get there, you have to know that everything after the word if is considered the hypothesis. Everything after the word then is considered the conclusion. So on the test, if I ask you what the hypothesis is on this sentence, you would say, I get an A. Okay? Let's try putting a phrase right here into a conditional statement. Okay, now the key thing to remember is that when you change this over to an if-then sentence, you have to keep it in the same order that it's currently in, okay? So what would this be as an if-then sentence? Someone give me a guess. If what? Yes, you can say if a polygon is a pentagon, then it has five sides. Or you could just say if it's a pentagon, then it has five sides. So let's write that down. Now, like we did here, we're going to add a few extra words like it so that when you read it, it makes sense and you don't sound like a caveman. You don't want to say, if pentagon, then five sides. Okay, add it so that it reads well. Okay, I'm not going to grade you on your grammar or your spelling, even though I would hope that you do have good grammar and spelling at this point in life. That's not the purpose. I'm seeing if you can write this as a conditional statement. Okay, so make sure that you keep it in the same order. The ideas that are at the beginning stay at the beginning. The ideas at the end of the sentence stay at the end. Okay. So that's the biggest mistake is kids would switch this around and say if it has five sides, then it's a pentagon. That's not writing it as a conditional. Keep it in the same order, okay? When we do switch them around, that is called the converse, okay? So the con converse is switching the conclusion and the hypothesis. So this would be an example. If a polygon is a triangle, then it has three sides. The converse would be if a polygon has three sides, then it's a triangle. And that is the writing the converse. Now, when you do that, it's not always true. Okay. For instance, looking at the very top one, if I get an A, if you wrote the converse, if my parents are happy, then I get an A. Is that true? Do your parents being happy make you get an A in, your, in a class? No. Okay, so that's the logic piece of it, the math portion of it, where it's using your brain to figure out Okay, is this sentence a true one or a false one? Would it work in all cases? So just know that writing the converse doesn't always mean that flipping it gives you a true statement. And we're just going to look at a couple more things before we end halfway through the notes. By conditional. This is when a conditional and a converse are true, you can write this sentence. Okay, an if and only if sentence. I'll show you an example. The previous problem we were looking at with the triangle having three sides was true both ways. So what I did was there was an if at the beginning here, right, on the last slide. I took away the if, and I took away the then that was right in the middle, and replaced it in between the two parts with if and only if. So we're going to go through an example of that right here before we end the notes. Okay. So we've got a minor is under the age of 18. What would the conditional statement be, the if-then sentence that would go along with that? How could you make that an if-then sentence? have to add a word or two to make it 
sound good as you read it. Yes. If you are a minor, then you're under the age of 18. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take out a couple of words, the age of, I'm just going to say under 18, it still makes the same sense as the original sentence. A lot of kids forget to write the word then, they just put a comma in between, please don't do that, make sure you have if and then in your sentence. So if you are a minor, then you're under 18. And just because it's a pet peeve of mine, make sure you're using the proper form of your with the apostrophe re. Questions on writing the conditional? That's going to be the first step on every single homework problem you do today is to write it as an if then. Is the converse true? Well, let's write the converse and then we can determine that. What would the converse be? Yep. If you're under 18, mm -hmm. Let's write that down. If you're under 18, then you're a minor. Okay, now biconditionals can only be written if these two sentences are true. So reading through them, if you're a minor, then you're under 18. Is that true? If you're under 18, then you're a minor. Okay, now I said to write a biconditional, we take away if and then, and we put if and only if in the middle. Because they're both true, it doesn't matter which sentence you use to write the biconditional. Okay, so you can use either one. I'm just going to use the one right above it, the converse. So I'm going to take away if and then from the sentence. So it's going to start with you are under 18. This is where we put the if and only if right in between the hypothesis and the conclusion. What we did right here is what I'm going to ask you to do on every single homework problem, which is a worksheet today. Are there questions on those three things? If one of the sentences above, the conditional or the converse, are false, or you're supposed to write the biconditional, you just write false. And you don't have to write it, because you can't write it unless they're both true. Questions on any of it? <laughs> 